It can't be done because it is a question of cross fertilization of ideas. We must learn from other civilizations, but learning must not mean surrendering to them. I'm submitting to us that we surrender to them. And going forward, therefore, you who are present here, we must think of another Africa. An Africa where when we talk about technology, whether it is in solar technology today, Morocco, and I stand to be corrected, is engaged in developing one of the largest solar farms anywhere in the world. I'm still talking about consulting engineers even in that field. Kenya is doing another major solar project and all African countries ought to be engaged in it. Namibia, I think, is also engaged in it. But if you ask who the consulting engineers are for those projects, they are not Africans. Even the solar panels that are going to be used, the best that African countries will do is to assemble them. They'll be brought as completely knocked down kits and ours is to assemble them as our children assemble Lego. We are talking about water and wa water, which is an important thing, and water engineering. And we have consulting engineers in that regard, even when we talk about water engineering and the drilling equipment, I know of no African country that makes water drilling equipment, perhaps South Africa, South Africans, correct me. When we are talking about road infrastructure, I know that sometimes even when we are doing the roads, even the one here, the Kampala and Tebe Expressway, the contractors under the guise of something that they now call design and build will even import steel from their countries saying that ours has too much carbon content. Sometimes even cement is imported because ours is claimed not to have certain ingredients. I'm still talking about consulting engineers. <laughs> when we are doing our railways, we may celebrate them all we want, but when we receive the wagons, They are rehabilitated engines that belong to the museums alongside the spinning wheel. I'm submitting to us that the consulting engineer is important to Africa's growth and development. You cannot deny that. And I can see the vision, I can see what the African leaders were thinking about when they met in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and came up with Agenda 2063. They were looking at the engineer and they were saying that the engineer, well, if he is a civil engineer, let him be an African civil engineer who is aware of the African terrain. Let him be an engineer who is equipped with what he or she needs to grow Africa so that when he or she is engaged in designing and ultimately presiding over the Af building of African roads, he knows he's our continent. That is what they were thinking. So that when they are building this road across the continent of the equatorial forest of Congo, they are building and they are empowering other African engineers. I saw them thinking about that. They must have been thinking about hydroelectric power and they were thinking about generating power from the nearly 1,270 hydroelectric power station that we have built. They were thinking of geothermal and they were thinking of consulting engineers who have 
African experience and know Africa and relate with other civilizations in a manner that is beneficial to Africa. They must have been thinking like that. When they were thinking about fuel, fossil fuel, and they were thinking about the pipeline, they must have been thinking about chemical engineers and other related engineers who would be doing things for the benefit of Africa. They were thinking about aeronautical engineers that would be capable not only of ensuring that the planes that are made in Europe and America fly, but who are moving progressively to ensuring that even Africa can produce an aircraft. The Brazilians have done it in our lifetime. But today, that is not the truth. So fellow engineers, if I have dampened your spirit, that was my intention. <laughs> because it is those dampened spirits that are capable of providing a fertile ground for the fruit of growth to germinate. This continent is capable of achieving much. Africa today has a population of 1.1 billion. We are 55 countries, and all the 55 countries, our economy is only as big as that of India. We can do better. And if we are going to do better, I have no doubt in my mind that you great minds that are gathered here, because the minds that are present here are some of the best minds that Africa can offer. Let it not be business as usual. Let it not be that you have expanded your farm to include the 100 engineers to do work that has been handed down to you by some European or Chinese farm. No. Let it be that you are also capable of doing things in your own right. You can do it. You must do it. Because if you don't do it, the thing that we call growth will never be realized. We'll have symbols of what we describe as growth, but Africa will never grow. We'll have things that appear to represent growth, but Africa will never have grown. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to remind you and to remind myself that if Africa is to realize our potential in the world of infrastructure, because as the Vice President rightly said, if you have infrastructure, it has an impact on agriculture. It has an impact on mining. It has an impact on the health sector. It has an impact in every other sector in our economies. It can be done. It must be done. And you are the ones who are going to do it. And remember that the world is not very kind. All of us know. Every other person in every other part of the world is trying to ensure that they are at the top of the food chain. Where is Africa in the food chain? Are we at the bottom of the food chain or we are at the top of the food chain? I am saying we are at the bottom and going forward we must fight our way to ensure that we are beginning to talk about things like nanotechnology. What are we teaching in our universities? Most of our universities, faculties of, engineer have, of engineering have equipment that were used in Europe during the industrial age. I'm saying this rather melodramatically, but I'm making my point. We must change. There must be a linkage between the practicing consulting engineer and the universities, there must be a linkage between that and industry. It cannot be right that in this day and age, that linkage is not there. And I believe that under the aegis of Gamma and FIDIC, it can be done, and that deliberate efforts are going to be made to ensure that we move in that positive direction so that Agenda 2063 is realized and the promises under the Sustainable Development Goals are also realized. I want to conclude this with this. Have you realized that several years ago we had something called the Millennium Development Goals? They were never achieved. So we have renamed them Sustainable Development Goals. And there are more now. 
So the truth is Africa must also define her own problems and having defined her own problems must also find solutions to her own problem. Do not be cheated. Do not be deluded that the world is full of benevolent individuals and institutions whose only claim to fame is that they want to lift Africa from the morass that she now finds herself in. The reality is the poverty of Africa is the glory of some civilizations. Poverty is an industry. Ignorance is an industry. Big industry. And there are those who want Africa to continue to wallow in poverty and to wallow in ignorance because it is their safest bet to their continued benefit. The day we wake up to that reality, the safer we are. That is why the English had this beautiful saying, let sleeping dogs lie. So we are sleeping and we are being allowed to lie. And we are being hypnotized into even greater sleep and slumber to dream even further. But I'm telling us, if Africa is to realize our dream, we must wake up. If Africa is to win the lottery, we must buy the lottery ticket. God bless you. A round of applause for Professor PLO Lumumba, ladies and gentlemen. He spoke for all that time without any notes.